Hello and welcome to yet another video and in this video I'd like to talk about this camera right here. It's the Canon EOS 1000D. Um, of course this camera came out a while ago, like at the end of 2008, and this video is actually not a review video but um, it's a video that I really want to make about this camera since I first started serious photography with this camera right here. Many of you will know that I actually started with Nikon, but when I really took photography seriously, I started using Canon because I really like their color signs and the way their camera handles um, things more, like handle the uh, color rendition, color reproduction, things like that. And at the time, this camera really helped me to learn a lot in photography. And nowadays that you can get it around for like, 50 euros or 50 US dollars maybe, or a little bit more or less depending on where you buy it. I, I think that it's a really, really nice and cheap start uh, with photography, if you're not sure about photography but still want to learn a lot about it. So um, this camera is not new, as, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't have the fancy features, it doesn't have the video feature as well, but it does have all the essential features for you to start photography and also to take good images. So um, this is not the actual camera that I used at the time. At, at the time I sold it to get a 7D when I first felt like I was able to actually move on and step to the next level. And yeah, but this camera I bought again like over a year ago because I just found it for a cheap offer for like 50 euros as I mentioned. And it's still fully functional and it's kind of a nostalgic feeling um, to actually use this camera from time to time and it does still take very very good images from time to time um, as you'll see in this video. So in this video I would like to talk about first the ergonomics and the image quality. Um, yeah, so first let's start with the ergonomics of this camera. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so this camera is actually a very very small and light camera as every entry level um, Canon cameras are. Uh, so it has all the essentials. Back then they did cut costs on, because this was the really lowest end of the entry level camera, they cut cost on putting a smaller screen here by 2.5 inch screen. And to be honest, in my experience, when I was testing this again and also using it outdoor from time to time, if you get your exposure right and everything, this screen is actually fine to actually judge um, your color, your exposure, your framing, things like that. And um, by having a smaller screen, this means um, your buttons are a little bit bigger and they're easier to operate. Well, it's very um, reachable to everything. And um, the grip is actually pretty small, so if you have really large hands, you might have problems with that, but you can get a battery grip for like 30 euros or 20 euros, so it doesn't really matter and the battery on here because it's a photography camera um, first well it doesn't have video mode um, that means the battery actually lasts long enough to shoot um, a whole day or even quite a few days of shooting with this camera so that's actually pretty nice um, all the buttons and everything are actually very very essential buttons that they have placed out here so you don't really have to go into the menu, you have your picture style, you have your drive mode, which means you can set to continuous focus or um, self timer or your metering mode, um, like what type of metering you want. And actually a lot of entry level cameras nowadays don't even have metering mode. So this is actually pretty nice to have. And you have your um, autofocus points, adjustments and selections buttons as well. Um, and you have your dedicated ISO button, which is what I personally find very, very, very useful because I use this button all the time, um, even on my professional cameras. And yeah, and most of the essential buttons, actually all of them are on the right side, which means you can just operate the camera with just one hand. This is actually pretty nice as well. And another factor that not very many people talk about, but um, I think it's very useful is it's not useful for me because I don't use a lot of flashes, but if you use the flash um, a lot of times, especially at night, uh, then if you notice with this camera, it raises pretty high um, away from the lens. This means that it actually helps with um, red eye deduct uh, reduction. So if you're taking pictures at night, you'll notice that a lot of people have red eyes from the flashes, but um, yeah, because how high this flash is sitting above the lens, this means that uh, 
there's a less chance of getting red eye. And of course, nowadays it's easier to get rid of red eyes in post production, but if you, um, post processing, but um, if you don't want to spend too much time on post processing and just want to eliminate as much of the red eyes possible, then this flash is actually quite nice. And it, it still has a lot of professional features. It has all the um, uh, manual modes up here, as well as uh, you can control your um, manual settings, like your flash settings, which I find really nice. Again, if you use flash a lot. I don't use a lot of on-camera flash, that's for sure, but I use a lot of external flash on my um, portrait shoots because I find them nice to operate, like to control the light in the way that I want because I can always move them. But yeah, that's quite nice. And yeah, also the more modern, um, like 1300D, 1200D, 1100D, will have their card slots together with a battery compartment, but uh, this camera is actually nice in the way that the card slot is here, so if you're shooting, I don't know, time lapse or long exposure or shooting a lot on the tripod where you need to change your memory card, then um, it's right here. You don't need to unscrew the tripod and then uh, open the flap down here just to access your memory card so that's really nice for an entry-level camera again this is just 50 euros now moving on into image quality um, oh by the way talking about um before going to image quality i would like to touch a bit on the autofocusing points it only has seven autofocusing points with one cross type now that's personally okay for this price of camera for me and as long as you have good light you will be able to focus things very accurately and it's really rare that you're gonna miss a shot unless if you're shooting a really, really, really fast moving object that's going across the frame or coming right at you and things like that, that's really quick. Um, otherwise, for normal use, it's really okay and it's also really, really fast and responsive. If you're shooting at night though, unless if there is some sort of point of light, it will not be able to focus, but um, you can always manual focus. And of course, you have your live view, which is nice as well to autofocus and to really magnify. You can magnify 10 times and adjust the uh, focus ring yourself. And um, it's also a nice way to judge your exposure before you take your image because it shows you the live feature of this camera, what is seen and what the color you're going to get, which is nice. Um, the only downside with uh, live view is that when you go in live view, I wish that if you go to other settings like menu, it would not exit the live view because that's really disturbing because it, it's always going to make this um, mirror flipping sound. Anyway, now into the image quality. It's not the best image that you'll get. 10 megapixel is actually still more than enough if you're going to be uploading to Instagram, to um, Facebook and other social media that you might have. And yeah, to me, that's that's very, very okay because 4k displays for example that's like what only mega uh, only 8 megapixels ish so yeah 10 megapixel is actually pretty fine for me and you still can do a little bit of cropping and print a4 size um, resolution with this um, camera sensor and I'm not talking about just the general 4k print uh, for a4 printing but also an actual photo printer with um, a4 um, proper photo prints um, because I do that from time to time. So yeah, I find it to be actually really nice and As I said if you have everything properly properly exposed um, And all the settings almost correct to very like perfectly correct on the camera and Yeah, you don't need to spend a lot of time post-processing because the files aren't really strong or robust like professional cameras but you will be able to tweak it a little bit to make it look nice but if you're gonna if you're gonna plan to use it for like extreme post-processing then the files on here might not be as robust and could fall apart very easily um yeah let's say if you want to recover um the shadows and the highlights push it all the way to 100 percent um then that's where it's gonna be tricky because the file might fall apart but if you're only gonna play with it for like 50 to 60 percent uh it's still able to manage if you're only gonna post it on social media if you're gonna do any going to do any professional work with it then uh i'd say don't go above 40 um percent margin like when you are 
editing, recovering areas and applying uh, certain effects or colors on here. Yeah. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this image quality. It's, it's very, very nice. Oh, at night, um, it's... The sensor is able to capture just enough detail for you to recover at night, so that's also quite nice. And also, the fact that the dynamic range on here, how much it sees both in highlights and shadows, it's not going to be as good as the more modern cameras. I think um, the latest iPhone, which is the 10s and the 10R that are out right now, it's going to be much better at taking pictures with high dynamic range than this camera. But this camera has APS-C size sensor, which means you can mount different Canon lenses on here or other third-party lenses and get better effect from the photos of this camera than the ones you're going to get with the more modern um, smartphones. So it's nice. This camera has no Wi-Fi feature, but it has like there are Wi-Fi cards that you can put into the cameras that um, will transfer the images directly to your smartphone devices or to other devices that can receive it, which is also nice. So essentially for 50 euros you can get really nice images and also able to operate this camera very nicely. And of course it's not the best camera in the world, but uh, for the price I cannot really complain. 50, 50 euros and if you get like a secondhand 50 millimeter lens for I don't know less than 50 euros or a third party like Yongnuo that you can get around 60 euros um, then you're gonna have a really really nice setup for portraits for landscape and yeah and it also allows a lot of light into the camera which um, the f1.8 on these cameras will give you more blurry backgrounds than the 1.8 you're gonna get with your smartphones uh, but yeah Anyway, that's pretty much it for this uh, for this uh, little um, video about this camera. Uh, I hope I can convince or help to suggest cheaper alternatives to getting into photography and not only uh, looking at um, more expensive and newer cameras. But of course, this really depends on what you need in your in um, photography. But if you want to focus on just the core essentials of taking pictures then I think this camera also delivers because it is only a, a photography camera and by being an only photography camera it means you're going to be focusing more on just photography and taking pictures rather than all the fancy features the newer cameras may have and this means that uh, because you're going to be focusing more on taking pictures you're gonna have a clear context rather than just like oh it has this feature so I can use this oh it has that features so you're gonna use that then you're gonna be focusing your images based on the features of the camera rather than the context itself of the images um, so yeah anyway um, it's getting a little bit too long so I'd like to end it here if you like a free uh, photography guide for absolute beginner it's also on my website and it will be linked down in um, the description below Thank you very much for watching and <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching and uh, yeah. Oh, by the way, I did drop this camera quite a few times and it's actually robust, but I don't recommend dropping it. Anyway, have fun shooting and have a nice day. Bye. Bye.